Hi, I'm Doug from Dynamic Computing and welcome to episode 155 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. Today, we're going to be exploring my Amiga 4000 again and doing a little bit of work on it. Now, I've been using my Amiga 4000 uh, as a I've been trying to use it kind of as a daily driver machine for a few months, and I'm working on an episode on that. But I have a problem with it, and that is she's looking a little bit naked. Let me show you what I mean. The old girl is nice and bright and shiny and clean. Just cleaned her up. But look at this. She's got this gaping, yucky hole right here where we're supposed to put a five and a quarter inch floppy or something like a CD-ROM drive. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. There, I've got this nice, uh, decent-looking CD Rewriter Plus uh, from Hewlett Packard, a nice IDE one. Now, unfortunately, the the colors for the front of the CD-ROM match the top of the case, the metal part here, but they don't really match the front here. But that's not the end of the world. I mean, it's still going to look pretty good. It's going to be close enough. The problem is the Amiga 4000 only has a single IDE channel, which normally can handle a master and slave IDE device, which would be okay under normal circumstances. But my Amiga 4000 is not normal. Let's pop off the top and you'll see what I'm talking about. We're gonna take a look at the inside of the machine right now and you're gonna see something a little different. First of all, we've got the BFG 9060, my nice uh, 060 running at 50 megahertz here. Uh, and of course, the Amiga has its standard single IDE channel right down here, but what's it going to? It's going to this adapter here, which is an IDE to SATA adapter. And in here, I have a nice uh, solid state uh, SSD drive. Now, it's not going to run particularly fast. It's no faster than an actual IDE drive because, you know, the Amiga 4000 is still a PIO zero uh, machine, which means we're only going to get about two to three megabytes per second out of it. The caveat with this adapter, this SATA, uh, or this this uh, IDE to SATA adapter, is that will only work in master mode. There is no master slave option on here. If you try to use it under cable select, it's not going to work. It's literally only going to work with one device. And a lot of them I found are either incompatible or they work only one device on the IDE channel, which means I can't use the secondary channel to handle my CD-ROM. So what's a guy to do? Well, how about this little nubbins right here? Now you'll notice this says it's AmigaKit.com. Funny thing is, is I did not get it from Amiga Kit. I ordered it from a guy online uh, when I ordered another part. I don't even remember what I ordered, uh, but I ordered this this device and it came on an Amiga Kit PCB. So either he's buying them and reselling them or something similar to that. Now the newer Amiga Kit devices like this, and I'll, I'll show you a link uh, right up in the description, has a nice plastic casing around each of the IDE connectors that's keyed so it's easier to get the cables on correctly. And it has four capacitor resist atometers instead of only two capacitor resist atometers here. So this I suspect is maybe an older model, but I think it'll be okay. In a nutshell, what we do is we put the single IDE cable here uh, from the motherboard onto this. It splits it into IDE1 and IDE2, each of them theoretically supporting two devices. Now it can support four. The Amiga itself only recognizes one IDE channel. We need some special software that we're going to be talking about to get it to work with four. Now, while we're here, it's important to talk about IDE cables. First of all, you don't want to use one of these IDE cables. That's an 80 wire cable. They don't work well on these older devices. And according to some, they don't work at all. You want to use a traditional 40 pin cable with the thicker cables on it, which brings up another point. Most cables you will find have that pin right there. See how that's blocked out right there to, to key it out? Uh, absolutely blocked out. But you look at the device, all pins are there. So you need to find yourself an IDE cable where all of the little pins are open. 
They're a little harder to find and they're harder to find than you might suspect. If you go through your box of cables, you may find three fourths of them have that pin blocked off there for keying purposes. Um, now there's ways around it. Like you can take a little hot pokey thing and melt the little key and just get a little hole there because it doesn't use that connection anyways. That works fine. Or you can just find yourself some nice cables. I recommend using the shortest ones that you can get away with so we have the best signal. So I've got my IDE cable connected to the adapter now. I'm ready to put two more cables on here. One running to my IDE to a SATA converter and one running to my CD-ROM. But you'll also notice that these are just little bare wires, bare connectors right in the bottom. So you need to be careful where you put this in the case so it does not short out. Now what I'm thinking, since I have a little extra piece of cable on here right now, I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll just put this little extra piece of cable here right on the bottom and then uh, maybe put a little zip tie around there and that will actually work as insulation and protect the bottom of the cables. I think I'll just do that just to make things smooth. You know, I've actually had another idea. I've got this sticky pack, sticky back uh, double-sided tape. I'm going to put this on the bottom of it. It's a uh, kind of a rubbery material, so it should work fine as an insulator. And then I think I'm going to position it right on maybe the side of my power supply here. Stick it down on there, keep it out of the way, keep it insulated, and have a place to plug my cables into. Now you'll notice I have a very strange power supply. It's missing 90% uh, <laughs> of the power supply. This is just a nice like 165 watt. And then I have one of these Amiga Kit A4000 converters. Some people say that there's they have issues with them. Mine has worked perfectly well for months. It hasn't blown up my Amiga yet. Now the caveat is, Obviously the power connector or the power button does not work, but that's something I'll probably work on where I'll modify this power connector so it aligns with it and I can switch it on and off with a switch. Won't be hard to do. I just haven't done it yet. So let me go ahead and put the sticky back tape on and I'm going to get this uh, positioned in here. Now you can see that little guy right there attached to the side of my power supply. Now I do have some shorter cables ordered. I've got some uh, uh, substantially shorter cables with just a single connector order to kind of knead it up, but this will work for now. Now I can just plug in my other two IDE cables right into those little connectors. Everything will stay out of the way. There's no chance of anything shorting out because I actually used uh, two pieces of the double stick uh, tape right here. I can take that off if I want to. Another good idea would be to use some of the Velcro. So you put uh, two-sided Velcro on there. Then you could easily just rip the thing off and put it back on if you need to. But this should keep it out of the way and not zapping anything. Let me get those cables plugged in. Yeah, these are way too cluttered to make me happy. These cables that I already have are way too long. I think I want to get something that's maybe eight or nine inches long. Even just a single IDE connector, I don't even really need the dual in this case. Well, I might get one single and one dual just to make things neater inside the case. But this will work for the time being to test my theory and get everything up and running here. Now I'm going to get everything plugged in. This will be my primary IDE connector right here. And this one will be my secondary that's going to go to my new CD-ROM drive. Uh, another inconvenience. This is not the end of the world. But sliding the CD-ROM in there, it's going to hit my adapter here, my IDE to uh, SATA adapter. See, I've got my, my little drive just uh, double-sided taped to the top of my floppy right here. I'm gonna have to move that out of the way. Again, not the end of the world. I'm gonna go ahead and get that removed. You're gonna find some contradictory information on this next step you're going to find online that in order to use a four-way device with Amiga OS 3.1.4 and above, that they want you to load this atopimagic.lha program. It's one single file, and they want you to put that in your LIBS uh, modules folder, and they want you to add a, uh, 
uh, load module command, all right? That's the information you're going to find online, and this is even a file released by Hyperion. It doesn't work. It probably worked with 3.1.4. It might have worked with 3.2, but I've found online a lot of people say it just doesn't work. But there is a workaround, super easy. What you want to do is you want to download idefix97.lha. I'll put the link in the description. Now, idefix is a big, big, big uh, program that adds file systems for CD-ROMs and file systems for LS120 drives. We only want one file from this entire archive, from idefix97. Okay, and let me show you what file we want. Super de duper easy. When you decompress that LHA file, when you decompress the LHA file, you're gonna find it puts all of its files into this folder called IDE fix, IDE dash fix. You want to show all files. You, the one file you want is in the devs folder. You're gonna find something called a toppy dot device, A-T-A-P-I dot device. Copy this to your devs on your workbench folder. Okay, so basically you're going to, if you wanted to do this through workbench or you wanted to do this through your, your favorite file browser or even the shell, you're literally going to copy a toppy dot device over to your devs folder, which is right here. All right, one single file, we can ignore everything else. All right, inside your devs folder, you're going to want to put the CD0 driver, the CD0 uh, mount list basically into your DOS drivers. Now, generally, you're going to find it in storage, DOS drivers, you're going to find one that says CD0 here, and you're just going to copy it over to devs. I have already done this. So, in my DOS drivers folder, I've got my CD0 right here. Now look what we have to do to this. Click it, information, icon. You want to change SCSI device. This is going to say SCSI device. You're going to want to change that to a toppy dot device. Okay, so it's not using SCSI device, it's using a toppy device. You're going to want to tell it what unit number it is. They start with zero, and that'd be my hard drive. One would be the slave on, on channel one, two would be the master on channel two, three would be the slave on channel two. So mine, since it's the master on channel, uh, the second channel, is gonna be unit two. We're going to save that, and then when you reboot the machine, in theory, if everything works properly, you're gonna have a new icon for your CD-ROM. In this case, it's a Mac OS 7.6 CD, which is kind of cool. I could probably use this to install Mac OS 7.6 on Shapeshifter, but you can see it brings everything right up. There's our CD-ROM. So in a nutshell, don't follow the instructions you find online for using Amiga Magic because it doesn't seem to work. I tried it, doesn't work. This trick where you load IDE fix 97, copy over that a toppy dot device file and just make that little change to your CD zero. Um, you're gonna be fine. It works fine because Amiga OS 3.1.4 and above include drivers for the CD operating system. Now, if you're using Amiga OS 3.1 or below, load the entire IDE fix package, that whole folder that we decompressed on there and I showed you where that Atopi file was. That has an installer on it. Just install the whole thing. It, it installs a CD file system and everything else right on your Amiga and it'll get your CD-ROM working properly. Remember the device number, the unit number. Again, zero is your hard drive, one is the slave, two is the hard drive or the primary on the second channel, three is the slave on the second channel. Do that and you can pretty easily figure out which device is which and what you need to add. Now, what can you do with a CD-ROM on the Amiga? 
Obviously, like I have here, the Mac OS 7.6 CD, you can grab files off of it. You can drag things off of the CD-ROM, no problem at all. There's lots of things available for the Amiga on CD. Uh, there's uh, Fred Fish disks that are out there. There's all kinds of archived programs and files that are available on CD or on ISO image. You can burn them yourself. It also makes for a, you know, one additional way to move big files from your PC over to your Amiga. Burn them to a CD, throw them in a CD drive, there's the file. Now, can the Amiga be used to burn CDs? I think so, but to be perfectly honest, I've never tried it before, but I believe there's software that allows you to do it. I'm going to look into that. We'll, we'll do a whole new show on that. There's also software that allows you to play CDs back just beautifully on the, uh, on the Amiga. You've seen me do it before, playing things back on my uh, CDTV or on my Amiga 500 with my... Uh, my CDTV add-on to that works fine. They place back CDs just fine. There's a couple of pieces of software. Matter of fact, let's do another episode, maybe even next week, all about the cool things you can do with a CD on your Amiga. That'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Huge thanks to my wonderful patrons who you see scrolling across this beautiful screen. Uh, another entry to the Amiga Art Contest in years past. Uh, don't forget, Amiga Art Contest has officially started as of June 1st, and you're able to send in your Amiga artwork until October 28th of 2023. Look for more details on an upcoming video and on all my Facebook and Twitter accounts and such. Thanks, patrons. So we've got a CD in our Amiga 4000 now. The Amiga 4000 looks much better, you can see. There she is. She's got a nice CD in there now. Color, fine. I'm not a, I don't object to that color at all. I've got a faceplate for this. I just have to locate it. I'll put that on there. Please follow me on all the social media companies. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Mastodon. You'll find all the links for that right in the description. Please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to get up to 7,000 subs in the next couple of months. And uh, I, I'm well on my way to 10,000, which is kind of a magic number. I think it's kind of neat. Leave a comment below and tell me what you use for CD usage on your Amigas. I would love to try out some packages that maybe you guys have used before and see what kind of cool things we can do with CDs on the Amiga. So drop me a comment. Let me know. But until next time, this is Doug from 10-Minute Amiga Retrocast, signing out.